Oh, no. that was Yo, this is the one and only Kansu Sheshmu Amun. The one and only Kansu Sheshmu Amun. Team Osiris. Um, Wild Out wins. What's going on, y'all? You know, we a little chomping at the bit here, guys. What it is, what it do. It's the one and only Kansu Sheshmu Amun. And we wilding out on a Wednesday. Just speaking our mind, putting some thoughts out there. You know, chewing the fat. Putting our opinion out there. Uh, some of you have tuned in to Wild Out Wednesdays and have had the opportunity to witness some bedlam. <laughs> so, welcome to another Wednesday. And a shout out to the Team Osiris panel. I see we got a few brothers out there. I open the panel to you guys, man. Say hello to the people out there. Man, now we quiet. <laughs> what's up, man? That's what's up. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. Anyone who else is out there? I think I see Melvin. We got real quiet when when we went live. Those of you who are watching, it took us 45 minutes to go live. We, if y'all would have heard these comments, now we quiet. Like, it's like ain't nobody even in the chat. Now we live, and everybody quiet. Man, you know, let's get the let's get the hash going so we can rehash. You feel me? Right. The first thing is first, man. Is we boycotting the NFL or is we not? And that means fantasy football. That means, uh, uh, I mean, for what? Sunday, for what? For what? As brother Chris, um, I'm to me it's either way because I'm gonna be honest. Like for me, I don't watch sports. So I'm real far. At the end of the day, though, it's like it's crazy because you got a lot of Europeans that don't agree with every motherfucker thing, but you gonna see them boycotting shit. You know well, I mean, I, I never, I don't understand the argument. I just, it's a job. It's like any other job. You, you, if if if, if you, if you gotta wear a uniform when you go to work, and you look at your standard operating procedures, if your job requires you to pledge allegiance and all the other shit. Do the shit. You getting paid. You getting paid to do a certain thing. In the NFL, you get paid to play football. You want to be an activist or something, use it on another platform. Do it on another platform. But you know what? That's, that isn't even my sole reason. That's one of the reasons, and probably the top reason. But, you know, I got a couple reasons why that I feel like I'm just going to walk away from football altogether. Why? And, uh, well, first, uh, I want to say that football has taught me some val valuable lessons. One of the biggest lessons is that uh, I don't let people outwork me. The next lesson is it doesn't matter how big or strong somebody is, you know. Um, it's, it's about the fight that's inside of me. And I took that and applied that to different parts of my life, and it served me well. So, uh, but now here is my reason again besides happiness. So one is that paradigm of of playing sports to make it out or, or liberation is heavily pushed on us. And there's other things that we can do and we got a lot better chances of uh, liberating ourselves. And you 
know me, I'm the tech man, so I'm advocating for the tech. And also, too, now we know, now we are starting to find out and learn through the through science about um, CTE and other types of injuries and things like that. You know, uh, it's, it's easy for them to put the football players on the news and say, oh, this guy, he acting out, or he's doing this and he's doing that. But without, it's not a fair conversation without adding in the factors of what comes along with uh, head trauma and brain trauma and things like that, and, you know. So, you know, that's my take on that. You know, so it's, it's multiple things. It, it ain't, tapping it's part of it, but once I really sat down and thought about the whole thing, I'm like, man, you know what? As much as, and I love football probably more than a lot of people. You know, I don't follow any particular team. I don't have a team. But the lessons that it taught me and the lessons that I wanted to pass on, but I just sat and thought about this thing, and I'm ready to walk away from it. Yeah, I, 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 I don't want to get that. I, I don't see the logic. I wish I could. I don't see the logic. <laughs> so I, I'm just I'm confused. Help me out here, Ruth. I'm 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 confused, bro. I, I would so the NBA is the NBA in the in the major league baseball and hockey and soccer and tennis and swimming and boxing all of them are just awesome huh? no no mm. Not mm. so you buy you're boycotting sports altogether you might, I guess you're gonna do that Go Patriots. Go Patriots. Well, then it, that, well, that nullifies everything. Oh, well, if you don't watch it, then. You're going to be looking at it, right? You're going to be watching it. Let me ask you a question. But 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 don't don't you think if it wasn't a mix, don't you think if it wasn't a mix of so of, of social sociability, we'd be like them cats in Wally floating on them damn floating devices and shit, and everybody just doing one thing. Just, Like, like, we're doing this and that, and we're doing the best we can. But 
best that we can do. But I, all I'm saying is, is that like, what if like, we, like, like um, Higgs said, we could change the paradigm shift to an infinite shift and a majority of people um, influenced by science and things that are going on and leading us into the future. Imagine the, what the change would be. Instead of a majority of niggas going outside, debating on the big rapper, debating on the fucking um, 14, and like, I mean, bullshit like that. I mean, I, I, I feel you. I'm, I'm not I'm not swayed anyway. I'm, I'm looking forward to the Patriots winning again this year. Um, I love boxing. I love baseball. Um, I love all sports. Love watching. Because it, I, I look at it as the rational mind, in my opinion, you know, like being able to rationalize facts and fiction and not get lost in the fantasy world. You know, how you get, you know, cats that, I know some cats that love comic books and they literally get lost in that shit and forget to go to work and pay some bills. So I know cats that just have an ability to not be rational and shit. But I, it's funny, I just, I think that the propaganda machine is very powerful. Yeah. I mean, you can't look at Dana White. Dana White, right? Dana White just as racist as the NFL. So I look at it like Jim Brown, Earl Campbell, Walter Payton, Barry Sanders. I mean, Barry left because he felt the NFL was racist. Nobody said shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think racism always been in the NFL. I haven't seen it ever not be. But I do think that when you sign in that contract, I would like to see an NFL contract. I don't even want to speculate. I would like to see the empirical evidence of what is actually goes in an NFL contract. Like, I would love to see that. Yeah, can y'all hear me? Oh, okay. So you saying that the CTE issue is not spoken of prior to these people playing football? But 
but at the same time, you know, there, there's pros and cons to football and particular sports in general. And I would, I would never say get this sport because uh, it is a beautiful thing. There's a lot of lessons in there, man. But as far as kids, I, I don't advocate for them to be uh, making contact like that and, and getting these concussions. I don't like that. I mean, there's, there's a whole other side of it, too, man. Uh, and, you know, we keep focusing on the NFL, but, you know, there's, there's semi-pro teams out there. I played semi-pro. I didn't get paid a dollar. Nobody got paid a dollar. And we was out there smashing each other up like we was trying yeah. to be pro, having a good time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I couldn't wait to bust somebody, you know. I couldn't and, wait and to bust somebody over the Like sports, 
and things like that. I mean, it's not going to change the world, and it's not. Couple hundred years from now, it's really not. Yeah. Or, or at least, or even yeah. Yeah. or something like that, or, or something that makes money that, that the kids use and they think, like you said. But they put more stock into the lesser things because they want to be famous, or they, you know, the, the self-esteem that comes with that, or you see you get bitches, or whatever the case may be. So you, you can just, like, sort of uh, put it out there that, look, you can be a rapper and a physicist at the same time. Like, there's dudes out there doing that right now. <clears throat> you can do that. Yeah, but you know what? I mean, and that's like extra rare. What what I see is a bunch of bunch of sadness, man, because really they put all of their chips into rap. You know? Mm -hmm. And, and yeah, it works yeah, that's the problem. work it works yeah. to build the studio, you know what I'm saying? And, mm -hmm. and they work to uh, uh, go out of town and do these shows or whatever, you know. That's yeah, they put all these kids on uh, making their kids into a, a sending them to these camps, you know, mm -hmm. finding uh, the wind parachute course, you know, bonding these food cleats. Mm -hmm. it, it, it needs to be a, so I'm, one thing, let's, let's, let's get this out the way. Paradigm is how you think about the world and how you think the world is. And yeah. that's what you need. I don't yeah. know how to push. All I can do is, is push whatever I can push the way I can push it and hope that it catches fire and hope that it catches on. That, you know, other than that, man, I ain't got no hope outside of that. Yeah. People are going to have to learn the hard way, which, of course, takes generations and not in. You know, time has passed and the opportunity has passed or whatever to, to do these advancements that we have seen happen in our past in America and as we go into history, they can see. When, when the whole society start grinding, you know, start coming out with all these Nobel Prize winning type ideas and shit, you know what I'm saying, the processes, it just gotta happen naturally. I mean, I don't know. You can't force you to do it. I mean, all I can say is you can have them look at it with a mature eye. You gotta be mature. You can't, you can't be the rapper. But let's say you like rapping. Okay, that's cool. If you're also good at it, making money at something more legitimate, consistent, right? Well, use that money to carry yourself. I mean, the extra money that you have after taking care of your family and all that stuff, not neglect. That's not that money until they're doing all star weekend at the phone and I might get, you know, noticed by Mark Sotomayor, he got a record or whatever. Instead of that, you do your own little thing, your shows, or whatever connect you got. You do that when you can, when you have the extra money you get, because now you can take care of the, of, of the more important things. Like, we, we have a hard time just doing that. But I, I find that the more successful people, that's pretty much what they're doing, man. They're taking care of their they thing. And then when you see them on anything else, Okay, we may have some technical difficulties here. Hold on a second. Everybody there? Let's see. Okay, we're just having a few technical difficulties here. One second, we're losing everybody. One second. Okay, we seem to have lost our signal. Hold on a moment, everybody. Something's going on here. Once again, this is Wild Out Wednesday. Team Osiris in the building. My goodness, we are having uh, definitely having some problems right here. Let's see if I can fix this issue. Hold on a second here, y'all. Let's 
Let's see what we got going. We're having some uh, internet issues, guys, so please bear with us. Hold on a second. Okay, I think. Yeah. Well, I thought we had it fixed. Hold on. Okay, guys, we just we just. Hold, hold, hold on a second, guys. Hold on, y'all. We had dropped temporarily, and now we are back. We are back. So we can, uh, yeah, we can uh, continue. We dropped momentarily. I tried to say it, but I guess we was full of the Holy Ghost and didn't hear it. But, yeah, yeah, I guess, I guess you would have to, bro. Fuck it! Fuck it! Fuck it. Right. Fuck it! Fuck, fuck it, he fuck, fuck, he fuck, fuck. Hold on, Chris. Hold on, Chris. Can you hear me? Yeah. Could one of our brothers is changing the carburetor in the background. So if they could uh, <laughs> mute the mic while they're changing their carburetor. And you can continue, brother Chris. Oh, yeah, man. Done. 
they can get the torch any day. This is a relaxed wall out point day, but you need this to get the torch any day. I'm the type of person, somebody comes at me with some better information, I'm just like, man, that's some good information. I'm wrong. You know what I'm saying? My bad. I appreciate you updating me. What's so hard about just saying, I don't know? Or, I, or this is my opinion, or this is what I think. You know? I'll give, I'll, I'll say one thing. I apologize. You said one thing. I find funny, right? I've seen videos of the star in his cell because he was once a Hebrew Israelite, and he was trying to claim that the Hebrew Israelites were actual inquisition. I guess he got his ass beat intellectually, so later he accepted the fact that his black ass was a band from Egyptian, or, or a band from Africa. So I guess from his standpoint, if I can't be an Israelite, a Hebrew Israelite that proves to be Egyptian, I'm going to prove to be a band to African that proves to be Egyptian. And the whole shit from beginning to what I know from him, what I see, and I have his book, so I'm not speaking for shit that I don't know. He seems biased from the beginning. And that he jumped from click to click, and whatever the mode or paradigm that he was in, he tries to attempt to make it fit the Egyptian mode. And that's fucked up, and you can't be a scholar with, with, within that man, because you're not being honest. Yeah, yeah I was, I was going to say and this. The thing is, though, that... I was going to say this. The reason why they can't accept the things he's talking about, as far as like knowledge and things they were they talked about on an academic level, is because they finance it from them. So anytime you tell us something, you can't be like, I don't know what the fuck is in it, or it ain't hundred percent real. You gotta sell it, and if people buy it, you gotta believe it's a hundred percent legit. But that's the thing, it's a hustle. Okay. Yeah, well, that, that pretty much puts the nail on the top. I wasn't going to say that, uh, uh, that uh, it, it's not, uh, you know, you don't you don't have to be an Egyptologist. You don't have to be a historian with a degree. But for you to go against the, the consensus, you know what I mean? For you to go, to dare go against the, the scientific consensus that has been, uh, that has been the product of generations of historians working towards that. So you, you, you better know what you're talking about. You know what I mean? Like you, you, you gotta, you gotta have, you gotta have analyzed everything that they have analyzed, and you better have a good position. You can't just come out out of some weird angle. You know what I mean? On some crazy theory, right. and think that that is gonna be enough to overthrow the consensus. You know what I mean? Like that, that's not how it works. Well, I. Right, because you can't just write a. You can't just write a well, well, for you know, for research purposes, for research purposes, everybody that's listening out there, do yourself a favor and look up appeal to emotion. Just look up the definition for appeal to emotion. I'm not even gonna go deep into it. Take a time to look up appeal to emotion, and you see it being implemented quite easily. You know. And let me say, let me say one name. Um, and I'm gonna say one name. Watch the reaction of people who haven't even read the film's work, and that shows you the fuck. Um, Miriam Lipton, uh, Lip, Lip, Lip Times, uh, um, her work. Oh uh, no, no, Mary Lef Lefkowitz. Mary Lefkowitz work, okay. She was in a debate with a lot of niggas saw on YouTube because I know you niggas didn't read the book. So a lot of niggas saw the debate on YouTube. Dr. Um, um, John Henry Clark, which um, I have the utmost respect for, him. and um, he had a lecture with her about the Black Athena book. All right, that's whatever hearsay goes, whatever, right? But she does a revised version, and her target is not even Dr. Um, John Hen um, Dr. Clark. It's more so the European individual that wrote the book. It wasn't. It wasn't a Black individual that wrote the book Black Athena. It was a European individual that wrote the book. And I believe, yeah, yeah, and I believe that Martin Stahl may be, uh, um, I think he may be a grandson of something to, like, um, Gardner who wrote the Egyptian grammar. And I'm not lying about this shit. Like, I, I believe that I, I talked about it before. Let me know Dr. John Hill the first out of the day. Yeah. So let me get into something that again, right? So a lot of people will say that 
Mary Lepkowitz was full of shit from her book. I've read her book. Her book had a lot of points. She did um, kill the book that um, I think Sadie promoted. Was, um, what's the book where it says that um, ancient Egyptian philosophy, um, Greek philosophy, from ancient Egyptian philosophy? About, uh, about, uh, 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 oh, oh, like, like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. okay. So she called the book out. And her point was real. I, I, li- I love the whole legacy of premise, but the book is certainly free. I'm going to say it's pseudo. I'm not stupid for the TV screen, but I believe the book is pseudo to some degree. But anyway, you understand that she writes another book, and it's called Black Athena Revisited. And in the book, she doesn't disagree that the ancient Egyptians were black Africans. She just, she's not disagreeing with that. She actually has a passage in the book, or I think it's an old chapter, where she states that the um, ancient Egyptians, to her, represented Asia type, the Ethiopian type, the Somali type of, 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 of North and East Africa, which I don't think anybody that has com- common sense of archaeology, um, genetics, and history and languages just can agree with that. You know what I mean? But you have a lot of people that are so Afrocentric and old born to some outdated text that they would actually feel something like that in the first time of the world, which I don't know if you were all the but her chapter on explaining the institutions she does the state of their African people. I mean, me personally, I don't even see what this deal is. I mean, like, I mean, at this point, I agree with you. At this point in the game, it's 2017, like, we know who, you know, the institutions are worth, so it's not even up to the basics.
me, but understand them. Also, uh, the continent, man, it's heavily co colonized, you know? So, yeah. I mean, you think, just like we are over here, you know? Love white yeah, Jesus. Dude. Yeah, you're not going to go over to Africa and escape white supremacy. It's not an African utopia. It's not a black utopia. Uh, like, let's, let's get that up. Tribalism still exists. Colonialism still exists. White supremacy still exists in Africa also. So like, that's why I'm saying right. like that's what that's that's what separates Timo Cyrus from everybody else because we you you getting the real you getting every aspect of it because I don't just study the feel good stuff or romanticized stuff I'm get I, I want everything I can possibly learn I want the good and the bad I want a whole scope of what's really going on you know you can't you can't sit up here and just be like oh man I'm gonna go back to Africa. And, and, and everything's gonna be fine, and I'm just gonna build up, and it's not, it's, it's, it's not gonna be that easy. It's not, it's not gonna happen like that. 
you know, so we, we just got to be real about this, this whole situation, man. You know, and that's and that's a lot of the problems that I, I see with, within, you know what I'm saying, ourselves as African Americans, man. We, have, we just have this mentality that uh, it's going to be some, some type of utopia. We just don't pay attention to all the signs of what's really going on with everything. You know, that, that that's the issue. We got to stop that. We, we just got to start. Right, doing I think a lot of people. Right, I think a lot of people got it really fucked up. Like, a lot of people who want to be this and other, I don't think any of these people can handle the weather and the climate in East today. You it's know, a hundred, I think a lot of, I mean, you looking at an average I think a lot of people who think that they, you know, hell yeah. Yo, I'm, I've on been there, day. man. I'm on a good day. Yo, I, I was, I told y'all I was in the Navy, uh, I was over in uh, uh, Bahrain and Abu Dhabi, all types of spots over there in the Middle East. We tried to wait till like midnight to shoot basketball, and it still was like 99 degrees. And we didn't last for about four or five minutes and gave up. You know, construction workers over there, man, they work they work in sandals. They don't wear steel toe boots because it's too hot. Just think about it. Think about it like this. You got African Americans, right? And for the most part, most of us are uh, uh, anatomically we're dark enough or, or, or our bodies are acclimated for the heat because of where we come from. You know, we can deal with it a little bit better. But don't forget, we still America. You know, we're not used to that type of climate. So you got African Americans complaining about 85 degrees. But you think you can handle 130? No. 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 Not at all. So and two, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people don't like the wildlife. You know, I'm a country boy from North Carolina. I love it. You know, yeah. but you know, people are scared of a little bug or moth or, you know, stuff like that. After, I mean, in deep in Africa, I ain't talking about the urban parts, but in the rural Africa, stuff is gonna be getting at you like never before. Yeah, absolutely. You gotta deal. Yeah, you gotta deal with the wildlife. You gotta deal with the weather. Not only that, but you got to remember that being an African-American, you're, you're not, you know what I'm saying, even though we've been removed away from the continent, some of the stuff that we won't be able to handle, like some of those pathogens, you know, some of those germs and things that, that, that we haven't been yeah. exposed to for the years, we're not going to be able to tolerate some of that stuff. Bro, let they me tell you. Got yeah, that's no that's Netflix, they ain't got no yeah, Wi-Fi, all right? right, they ain't got none of that shit. <laughs> right. Yo, yo, with Hayru no, said. No, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm just playing. <laughs> but, no, absolutely not. Right, right. What Hayru said was very, very vital because a lot of people don't realize because you've been in this country for so long, biologically you've adapted to this style of living. So if you were to walk into a foreign country, you need to always get your shots. Otherwise, you're walking time bomb. Everybody you interact with, fucking, it, you're lethal to people when you walk past them, when you breathe in the same uh, vicinity as they do. So you got to realize that there's a biological difference. You may descend from Africa, but your ass ain't African. <laughs> Man, I got so sick when I was in the Navy. I was, uh, I think we was like around Israel, and I, they didn't know what I had, man. And luckily, I, they just gave me some antibiotics. It, I don't know what it was. It was like the flu. My joint it swelled up. I'm coughing. Stuffy nose. I had back pain. It was, man, I don't know what I had caught over there. <laughs> you know, but uh, and, and then too, you know, they give you tons and tons of shots in the military. You got you got to take the shots or you get kicked out. So, I mean, this is different. So, if you just willy-nilly talking about, I'm going back to Africa, man, you in for a world of hurt. Yeah, and then also I wanna I wanna make one last point from my perspective on this topic. I don't I don't I don't wanna deter anybody from going if that's what you wanna do. By all means go. Because at the end of the day, me personally I do I personally still wanna go. But I just wanna I just wanna make sure that everybody has a, a level headed approach to it and, and, and right. uh you know, people really understand what's going on and not thinking that they gonna go over there and it's just gonna be some kind of utopia and they gonna be like uh, Pablo the man over there in Africa, you know, it, that, that's not what it's gonna be like, man. It's gonna it, it's gonna be a ball, a different ball game. You're gonna be in a different environment. You're gonna be amongst different people. You're gonna be in different cultures. 
you know, it's, it's not it's not that easy where you think you're just going to move across town and you can still operate the way you've been operating. you just on the other side of town. That's not how it works. So, I mean, but still, if you want to go, by all means go. Like I said, I still want to go. Have some fun. Do what you need to do, you know, but but at least have an understanding of what's really going on. Right. Even if you go to the city and you stay in the tourist areas, the tourist zones, it's still a different environment. You know, you might be, quote, unquote, safe, but it's still a different environment. Yeah. But um, we can go back to this Negro Egyptian thing because, like, you know, I think we all said everything you know, earlier, and, and Brother Josh did a great job the other day. Um, Man, this is basically it. He killed it. I told him, you know, he gave to the whole clip on it. That's good. You know, just to, you know, see, you know, the, 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 the lack of proper methodology on their part, you know. But I think, I think people, when they see that, you know, a lot of people are going to think we're still holding animosity against them. But I think people really should see that the flaw here has, has always been improper methodology. Even when we did what we did with Jawu. You know, it wasn't necessarily a hate thing. You could prove that he played Jarrah's that book. You know? So it's, it's it's improper methodology. And this isn't the first time, and I guarantee you it won't be the last time. You know, they, I, until they change. I will say this. I will say this, too. When we dealing within this quote-unquote conscious community, you know, we all can understand now at this point that, you know, well, at least on the team, I'm speaking from a team perspective, we all understand that we're going to run into a whole bunch of fucking re-reads with improper methodology and, and, and messed up ways of thinking and, and, and different ideologies and doctrines. But when you put yourself out there as the premier group to say that you have the best methodology, you got the best team, and you got the best information, you bring in the real and the raw, but you are holding on to flawed or improper methodology, then that, that's mm-hmm. a big problem. That's a big problem. Big problem. Because now you got people looking to you and trusting you with the information. So here it is. You seem to like everybody else that you beat up. You hold on to something that's not that that that's not correct. It's it's not at the end of the day. Yep. It doesn't help the confidence in uh, black American scholarship either. You know, because the day always comes where you get found out, right? And a lot of times, <clears throat> a lot of times it's natural where you just didn't have the technology to know, and maybe you would have agreed that you, your future self would say your old self was wrong, right? But then other times they know they're wrong, and they still propagate something, so they get found out, and then it's like, oh man, so can we trust any black scholars? You niggas is all gonna be, you know, bamboozling and lying and shit, and using white man tactics, quote unquote, you know what I'm saying, uh, against your own people and that kind of thing. So. Um, yeah, they, it don't it don't bode well for the confidence, right. the yeah. morale. If if we was to take, if we was to take this Negro Egyptian concept, you know what I'm saying? If we was to take this and go debate at a university, or try to turn down some uh, of what we perceive as racist white uh, and that information, how far would we get? What? Right. Hey, yo, yeah, so, not, not so, very far. So, you know, that's at the end of the day, it's gonna make us look bad if our stuff is not right when we try to pre- when we try to go present it to the people we quote unquote call our enemies or the people who quote unquote wrong. Oh, which brings me to something, man. I remember back in the day when I was, you know, just watching these dudes on YouTube and shit, and uh, for the first time or whatever, and they would say things like, yeah, you know, coming up, we gonna be challenging academia. You gonna see, we gonna we gonna do some things where. You know, we challenging academia, and they was like, damn, that shit sound good. That sound like you gonna find something that was wrong, get it corrected in front of in front of the public, and it's gonna be like, you know, a, a grand moment. But I ain't seen that shit happen yet. I ain't seen that shit happen once yet. Now, now I have seen people do the whole uh, red herring thing where they might bring up an argument that has already been defeated and then defeat it again, right? <clears throat> they might right, do that. Right, so I'll think shit. Some outdated shit. Right, some outdated shit from the 1800s. Look, I'm smashing on this shit. But it's like, yeah, my nigga, but we, everybody's been smashing on that already. Yeah, like, yeah. 
I'm all for going to academia, going at these white folks that uh that's still holding on to some of these uh racist ideologies or whatever. But if we're gonna go at them, we gotta go correct. We can't go in there looking like no fool. I'm so sorry. We not we not we not gonna get nowhere trying to put some Negro attention on them folks, man. Because at the end of the day, once you understand once you understand linguistics and and comparing languages and understanding them, it don't take a damn record time to figure out that no goddamn Central African language that's pretty much new compared to the African or Asiatic languages that they try to compare it to. Mm-hmm. It's pretty much new. That don't have nothing to do with that shit. Like, come on, let's stop playing the same game. Here, uh, I'm so there. Yeah, it's uh-huh. almost like it's almost like they do what the uh, y'all know how the African Americans and African crew do with the pictures, and they try to do the lookalike with the pictures. It's uh-huh. almost like right. this what those cats are doing with the language. They find a couple words that might seem similar and uh-huh. try to put them together and say, oh, oh this yeah. is this, this, this. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. And I, I, I know, I know, linguists have a. I know linguists have a, a, a specific term for that, and I, I don't recall it off the top yeah, of my head. Is, but there's a certain term yeah, where term. where where you know, yup, yeah. I, uh, I forgot it myself. I know exactly. Right, where 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 you you know that it, it's it's a natural thing that words in any language you could pick the the newest language to the most ancient ones, and there's bound to be some words that are going to be that are going to sound the same, and that may even be are related uh, in definition, but that doesn't mean that they derive from each other. Correct. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, that's, that's, I guess, guess what that's called? Guess what that's called? It's called context. It's called culture yeah. context. You lose uh-huh. culture context. A lot of times people don't realize you lose culture or context within translation. It's like when we were, de- when we were debating the Moors, and we were telling them that they took the word Mare, which is well off, from, came from the Greek. And the Greek took they, they translated it, but they translated it out of context. So when it's translated out of context, you have to either catch up something to make it similar or create something completely different. And that's what the Greeks did with the will off word because they could translate it properly. And we're doing the same thing, but we're trying to translate Bantu and Egyptian languages using the English tongue. We're losing mm-hmm. context. Mm-hmm. We're right. losing context. And that's giving them too much credit, bro, because there's a lot of them that just resort to flat-out ghetto etymology, bro. Like, straight up, they just resort to making yeah, up shit, right. you know what I mean? Like, they'll talk yeah. about America, that, that that stands for Ameru, and, you know, like, come on, man. You know, you know what I mean? Like, they do that shit a lot, and, you know, Dr. York used to do that a lot. Dr. York used to do it all the time, so it's just a habit. A bad habit that people pick up on, and they're just wrong with it. Yeah, I think a lot of that is is indoctrination as well. Like these people that claim they might be, you know, woke or whatever the case may be. A lot of them still suffer from a, a religious sort of narrow mindedness or isolationist type of mindset. And so, and, and then and in that religious context, it's always about somebody had to teach. Person A taught person B, then person B taught person C. Like, nobody could come up with nothing on their own. It had to come from, oh, I got it from <laughs> over here. So that gets applied to these things like language and shit like that, or archaeology or whatever. So people in Mesoamerica, they built the house. Okay. Uh, so what's, that, what's to say that these people did not learn how to make a house on their own? Like, they're so even far removed from the Siberians, they might not even have learned from the Siberians how to make those kind of houses, even though they come from the Asian corridor and all that shit. They learned again while they were in America. Why do we have to say, well, some Africans had to teach them how to do that, or you know, whoever it was, some some Asiatics went over there yeah, that, that, and, taught them, and taught them how to make a house. My nigga, yeah. people make houses. People that, make houses. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That that's what I call that, that's what I call the comparison game. And I've always said, you know, those are products of natural human evolution. You know what I mean? Those yeah. are products of natural that's, human intelligence. You, you can't yeah. assign them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, like, you, you could, and, and it's not only, it's not only with uh, architecture, because even in belief systems, like, come on, like, like, the belief in intelligent design ah, is as old that, as man. That too. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, that, yeah, too. that That has nothing to do with, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, that 
has nothing to do with the Egyptians having taught the Olmecs or or anybody for that matter. I don't care who it is. If it's the Greeks that yeah. you want to compare, any civilization on Earth, that's the intelligent design uh, concept is one of the most primitive things that you can find in man because he is overwhelmed by the reality, uh, you know, beyond him. So, but you know, and then and then it goes. It, there, there's there's uh, it's like a domino effect to that. Not only do you start believing in intelligent design first, but then eventually you start worshiping mortals, thinking that uh, that that intelligence, that that primordial intelligence, somehow came down on a certain human being. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. And so that's where the concept of messiahs comes <clears throat> from. And and you can find that concept everywhere in in in, uh, in Mesoamerica, in, in the Americas, they call. You know what I mean? In in, in ancient Egypt, uh, it, it was Osiris or Heru, uh, and and you're gonna find the Messiah all over the world. That doesn't mean that one civilization traveled all around the world teaching everything. Yeah. <laughs> that's just like yeah, that's just that. like saying that, that's just like saying that uh, Native Alaskans learn how to fish from West Africans. Like like right right. Humans <laughs> fucking fish like duh. You know, yeah. You're right. I mean, humans understand, hey, we gotta eat, and this is what we gotta do. <laughs> like, you know, hey, gotta people gotta like, understand, they taking away the ingenuity that people have when they say shit like that. It's like, you, you got one group of people, and you might have different factions within that one group of people that learned independently how to fish. They did not ask each other. You see what I'm saying? Oh, there's, there's, there's pyramid type of uh, structures in Mexico so they had to get this from the ancient Egyptians. Like, right, like, right, right, right. <laughs> well, you can go all over the world and see that. Because they had the internet back then. They had planes and the internet so they could see that there was pyramids over there already. <laughs> and then they were like, oh, we got to do that. <laughs> you can go all over the world and see that that's just something humans do. Humans build fucking weird ass structures all over yeah. the damn world. You got Venus figurines. You can find Venus figurines in Africa. You may find Venus figurines in Asia and Europe. Do you, do you say that they got yeah. it all from one source? No. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, <laughs> we fucking humans. Obviously, humans just... are certain things. So if if if, if a, a, a human in Africa eating, and you see a human in America's eating, does that mean that one got it from the other? No, motherfucker. That's how we survive. We gotta eat. It's real time. Right. There's a thing called uh, the Solutrin Hypothesis, and uh, I don't know if you guys heard of it, but it's it's uh, oh, yeah. basically yo, something. Yo, yo, speaking of oh, yeah. speaking of all of this shit that y'all talk about, every last one of these pseudo pseudo claims come from your beings. Every Fact. last one. Of them. Oh, <laughs> every, every last. And every you can see why. Of them. You, you can see. You can see why right. it did it, how it worked. It made it right. be in power. Like, like that's, why I mean, we, that's why we as a group had to pardon Van Sarnamer just a little bit because right. he got nearly 80% of his shit from Alexander Von Rutenau. Like, right. he, he didn't even make his mind up when he made that book. He was the right. arguments. Like, <laughs> yeah. He, he's probably he real white. Right. <laughs> That the author didn't make his mind up, but then somebody else came behind it and made his mind right. up for him. Like, yeah, we, that, you can say that about all the books. Shit. That's what people do. Right. That's the fucked up shit. Somebody was just expressing a thought, you know, uh, of maybe, possibly, right? Yeah. Going back to the first people that was hypothesizing on, well, was it a creator and that kind of shit? You can't be mad at them for having them thoughts. They was just thinking shit through. They might have wrote some of it down. They might have did some as an oral tradition. <clears throat> right, but I mean, it was just hey. somebody. It was someone's diary, my nigga. <laughs> right, but anybody who knows, who knows how to contact an author, if you read with the New York Times, and did when they interviewed him, he said he wrote the book to make me feel good. I was like, oh, there it is. The author yeah. said it in mouth why he wrote the book. It was not an academic book by far. <laughs> No, I mean, they came before Columbus. Let me tell you, man. One of the reasons I can't take the book serious is I got to give credit to my boy Shabazz, man. He called him out on it. Um, I haven't been certain from a quote 
mythological, a known mythological book over 20 plus times within his works. I mm-hmm. think that alone kind of disqualifies you from having a nonfiction book. All right. You quoted over 20 times a known bro, mythological bro. book. His, his book was not meant to be taken serious. Exactly. <laughs> These were just his thoughts. He was like, you know, maybe, maybe this could be a possibility. Yeah. And it just it just hit though. And and now, you know, and, and that's the thing where, you know, like I Yeah, I, you know, like the thing is, I, I would have had uh, uh you know, no, I still I still respect the man. It's not that I don't respect him, but it, it, it's just it, it's a little infuriating that you know you know you're you're making a a point you know a a, a, a pseudo book and, and and because of that millions of people read that you know what I'm saying there's consequences to that now millions of people are walking around thinking they know something about Mesoamerica just because they read yeah. Ivan Vassar Team's book. You know what I mean. I wouldn't even be mad at him per se. I would be mad at the people who read it and don't understand what's really going on. If you read a book, yeah. you, don't just, you don't just read it to find so-called facts that you feel like is going to go along with what you think or you want to happen. You got to read a book to understand it. You need to be in the, you know what I'm saying? You need to know what was the author thinking when they talked about the book. You need to understand the context of the entire book. You also need to go through right. the references. You need to be going through the index and understanding what's big, you know what I'm saying, what's going on. So you have a firm understanding of what's going on with this entire work. You don't just, I mean, that's the problem. Too many people, and yeah. a lot of times, let's be honest, man, a lot of these people in this country really be saying they read these books, they're not really reading. Yes, I think we, hold on a second, I think we just lost everyone again. Everybody, you're listening to Team Osiris, Wild Out Wednesdays. It's your one and only Khan Sushesh Moon. We really get in on some hot topics. Um, and we've been really listening to the brothers give an excellent excellent breakdown on a lot of the ongoing topics in the conscious community oh yeah wait till you see the guys who talk about some books that they don't even know exist hey Hey, you I want to throw this in there too have we seen examples of some of somebody um purporting these things that are in these books before those books come out because i mean that that's a big red flag right there that a lot of these ideas these people i think they think they got an original thing or whatever they didn't have that idea until after oh, these works come out oh, yeah. well, what, do, what do you mean like uh like uh What's his name? Like Dr. Imhotep, David Imhotep. Uh, yeah, yeah, that too. We'll, we'll, we'll say we'll say uh, the Yorkies, right? We'll say the new, the Nuwabi and all that shit. All them characters and all that that jazz and, and now these uh, Andromedans, <clears throat> Andromedans, uh, uh, yeah, and yeah, all yeah. this shit. Who was talking about that before there was actually works about that? Because I mean, that would that let you know right there? that it wasn't a real thing because it's not, it's, you don't see it anywhere in history, anybody talking about this type of shit. Yeah. Like they just built on top of it. I would say also, um, what's, what's the guy's name? Uh, 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 Emo, the Dr. Emo Tep again. That dude, he yeah. the one that wrote that book about the first American being black or something like that. Yeah. And he got that uh, black guy on the front cover. Mm-hmm. That, the front right. cover of the book alone is extremely misleading. It's extremely misleading because once you dig up the history on that photo, you like, 
why is this even relevant to the title of the book or what the book is about? Because the photo right. of a black man who happened to be on a British vessel, who was a sailor on a British vessel, what does that have to do with the title of the book and what your book is about? So you're already right. deceiving people just off the front cover of the book. Yep, disingenuous. And like I said, people are not really reading these books and they're not really understanding because they look at, you know what I'm saying, any average person, 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 Yeah. 
necessary to build up in the Red Sea and bring that up, to, to bring up the lowest part of the to And you're like, dude, this, this guy's a sham. You run around and control this guy. Like, the problem is that he's a sham, bro. And, and see, that, that goes back to what we, we were just talking about. Like, you got these guys, man, on um, computer engineers and stuff like that, or electricians. Then all of a sudden, they wake up one day, hey, I'm going to be a rock and roll. Hey, I'm going to be a book painter. Hey, I'm going to be a linguist. And then, and then, you know what I'm saying? They, hey, they have a pretty good future to write books. And, you know, they have a good future. So, hey, they get a problem out of it. And then, you see a fair example, an example of that right now. So, okay. I, don't, I don't want people to get the wrong message. Nothing wrong with having a degree in IT or in computer science. Yeah. Wait, no, you don't think. Yeah. No, you're not. Right. And if you don't, if you at least run your way, at least respect the academic way, and if you're going to pursue an advancement in, in any field, you need to take the standards that they have and make sure that your, your claim and your assessment meet the set of standards. Me, myself, I have the same, same degree, but I also know the rules of linguistics, and I know some people are like anything linguistically, you have to start with semantics. You can't just go rolling up the semantics and use the pair of the study. You have to start with semantics, to ground one, and prove that they sound the same. In the same lottery uh, usage of the tongue and the root is about basic shit. But you have to understand that first. The same when it comes to anthropology and, and, and biological science. You have to use the standards. You have to make sure that your assessment meets the standards. If you don't understand the standards, you're going to be a society of culture. Yeah, 
course, there are countries that have not been pacified, but a lot of the United States, they bring up these arguments. There are you can go Google. It's like, why are you actually asking this for Thanksgiving? You probably was talking this in the second fucking grade. That's what I'm saying. Right, right, right. Like, like, like you graduated, you know, you passed fifth grade. It's like, I don't know what happened after, but at least you passed fifth grade. You speak English really good. Like, so, how do you, like, get there? Like, uh, a lot of the places that I live in, on a daily basis, is stuff that I've written and I'm not thinking to myself. A lot of these stuff, these things that I'm learning in third or fourth grade, and I'm thinking to myself, like, were you paying attention in third or fourth grade? Like, what school is built to me that you completely miss this simple, yet easy shit? How do you not yeah. understand this? How are you saying, okay, well, the world, you know, the most high is the tornado lightning, that's the world that's happening. How, uh, uh, the most high used that tornado and jump them to destroy that freaking town. No, that's not how things happen. That's not what it is. Hey, that's arrogance. That's arrogance, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, you know? that's, 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 because the universe is not about us. Everything we don't happen just to make us mad or, you know, all set us. Oh, you're trying to get me out of my game. I saw you. I caught that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> the tornadoes touch down and I'm wrapping all of the inside and then get them all in the head. No knowledge of it. What weather conditions can get in the tornado? Then, yeah, I'd give you some entertainment on you saying the most high did. But the fact that we know that tornadoes primarily have to go at a certain time of year, certain weather conditions have to be present when they're hot to happen. You know, we, we, we got this thing really pretty much figured out. There's no mystery to this thing. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's not really a mystery to it. You just don't know the thing. You know, your power of belief is, is when you put it stronger than human ingenuity of what we are to you as a person. More mortality comes into play too because it's like if we were indestructible type creatures or something like that, Live forever and walk through a hurricane and shit like that. You probably wouldn't populate. You wouldn't populate as much as you do on what it comes on. Facts. You would just say, "Oh, oh, it's a natural process." But then nothing. You know what I'm saying? Don't worry about it. Super facts. That's that's what we would say. That's facts. That these things kill us and you know and that kind of thing or injure us or make us sick and that kind of thing. We we scared to admit that yeah we are susceptible. We are vulnerable to shit. So we got to make up something. That can redeem us, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, well, yeah, I got this bitch, but you know, Jesus, you're going to get that, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> instead of just admitting that, you know, I'm a fallible, you know, vulnerable animal. I'm an animal, too. That's the other thing. Like, we're just animals, just like everybody else. It's animals, you know what I mean? It's, all there is is plants, animals, bacteria, archaea, fungi, you know what I'm right. saying? That's, that's, that's all there is. Look. Look, the truth is, I, I can't understand why people don't accept the idea that they're animals. That's what psychology comes into play. You think you're so fucking smart that you don't even realize that you yourself are made the same shit that other animals are made up of. Since your environment is changed. And you locked up with it. You grew, and you got out of the fucking forest in the jungle with time. That's what happened. You locked up. Yeah. 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 Ye
Like, nigga, you know that ass came out of the trees. Nah, I'm walking here with me. I got you. What you saying? What you listen to me, bro? I know it's one little piece of thing I can speak to. And you say, uh, 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 uh,